welcome to my channel and today I'm just going to be telling you my thoughts on Carrie Hope Fletcher's new book When the Curtain Falls. So this is Carrie Hope Fletcher's third novel and Carrie Fletcher is basically an auto buy for me. I pre-ordered this before I fully knew what the plot was about. So I'm just going to quickly go through the plot. I'll try not to include any spoilers in here but you know what I'm like sometimes I just go off on one and one may pop out of my mouth. I do apologise if that happens. When the Curtain Falls follows two timelines. We've got 1952 and what I believe is the present day. In the present day we've got Olive who is an up and coming West End actress and we've also got Oliver who's making his West End debut but he is very famous for being on the TV and soap operas and it's kind of one of those, I don't know the word but it's one of those actors that every woman has a crush on, a bit like Tom Hiddleston, Benedict Cumberbatch, something like that. So he's a bit out of depth. And Olive and Oscar end up having this kind of rocky relationship. Olive doesn't really have any courage in this relationship and Oscar's always a bit worried because he doesn't like his relationships going public. So we see them in this and they've just started rehearsing When the Curtain Falls and then we also see them on opening night as well. Then during this they have flashbacks to 1952 where we follow Walter who has just got a job at stage door in the same theatre and also follows Fawn who is a really really big West End actress and Walter falls in love with Fawn, she's a very beautiful woman she's kind of in this weird relationship with Hamish who is the stage producer um, it's not kind of a relationship, it's more like her dad gave him money so that she would become a West End actress and now he feels like he owns Fawn and it does create quite a bit of abuse, trigger warnings for rape as well in this book which I did not expect Carrie to go that dark but yeah, trigger warnings for that, so just be aware when you do read this book. But anyway, they decide to try and get rid of Hamish and it all goes wrong. Hence why one of these characters is haunting Olive and Oscar when the curtain falls, comes back to stage. And it was all very, very interesting. I did find that the present day was sometimes a bit boring. I did like Olive, she was a bit whiny sometimes though, and Oscar, he seemed totally fine. I understood his insecurities about relationships, whereas I think Olive, she was kind of like, just give him a definite answer please, you are annoying me. And that was all interesting, especially when the ghosts start coming in, I loved that bit. But I must admit, I do feel a bit closer to Walter and Fawn. There's something about the 1952 sections that I just loved so much more. I think they were more interesting because the beginning of the book really tells you what happens and you want to know that build up towards what happens. So I think that's why I did prefer the 1952 parts and it was a lot darker, especially when you get into everything with Fawn and Hamish as well. And I kind of just wanted to protect Fawn, I wanted to make sure she was okay and the ending just makes it a whole lot worse. I must admit in the last few chapters I did get quite emotional and that's what Carrie Hope Fletcher does best. She puts all the emotion into the end of the book when stuff happens and yeah, I did want to cry. One thing that I didn't like about this is that her other two books had quite a lot of magical realism in it. This didn't really have that much. Like I said, the present day was all a bit boring until the ghosts came and they started haunting them and that was like after the halfway point. And then even in the 1952 bits it was all a bit like a contemporary kind of book. But I was a bit upset that there wasn't as much magical realism in because I actually really liked that with Carrie Hope Fletcher's books and I think that's why I didn't rate this as high. I think I gave this a 4 stars but now I'm thinking about it I might knock it down to a 3. But I don't know if that's a bit cruel of me, so I'm not quite sure. I also really love the setting. Anyone who knows me knows I love my theatre. And I do love going down to the West End in London, going to see Wicked, and I want to see Hamilton now. So to have this set in an actual theatre was great. You do find out that Carrie knows a lot about the theatre. There's lots of like shorthand words for stuff that I don't really know what they were. So it would have been nice if she can use the longhand writing rather than just abbreviations. Apart from that, it was quite good. I did like it. Not her best book. But then that's my personal opinion. I did really like All That She Can See. That was my favourite book. This is probably close second, I think. But I'm not 100% sure. That's just very, very quick thoughts. Because I always hate doing long reviews just in case everyone gets bored. And also, I can just ramble on and on. And I don't want to spoil anything. So I think from now on, my reviews are just going to be a quick my thoughts kind of video if that's okay with you guys. Because I don't do reviews that often, I should do them a bit more, which is why I'm thinking quick reviews are probably best. So if you've read When the Curtain Falls, feel free to comment down below because it would be nice to have a little chat about what you thought. 
and I will see you later with a new video. Bye!